In regards to gender and work, one of the basic points that I want you to understand is the concept of the separate spheres ideology. This follows the rationale that the woman's natural place in the home and that the man's natural place is at work and outside the home. That women inherently are nurturing, demure, and sacrificial, which of course means that they are a perfect fit for the domestic role. Women are also naturally weak and fragile, thus they should not be forced into a competitive labor force or public life. And men are naturally aggressive, calculating, and rational. Thus there are separate spheres, the public sphere for men, meaning work and political life, and the private sphere for women, meaning homemaking and domestic life. This separate spheres ideology was embraced in the 1950s. The main reason it was so popular was because when men were returning from World War II military service, there was a dire need to return them to work. Women had entered the workforce in unprecedented numbers during the war due to the need for labor. Many men returned to college too during the early 1950s, and women that had entered college during that time dropped out in large numbers, many of them marrying men that they met who came back to college after returning from the war. What kinds of trends are we seeing in the areas of work and the economy? We see that there are increases in women gaining entry to male-dominated fields, such as engineering, medicine, law, and administration. In 1983, 15% of lawyers and 16% of physicians were women. And by 2009, those numbers had doubled. However, it's not all rosy. Women comprise 96% of secretaries, 92% of registered nurses, 95% of child care workers, and 97% of dental hygienists. As far as trends regarding women and household work, the separate spheres ideology still seems to impact home life. Women spend about 19 hours a week on household chores, whereas men spend about 10 hours a week. Now, things are better than in the 1960s, where women spent about 35 hours a week on household chores, with men spending about 4 hours a week. But consider, too, that many women today are working full-time jobs, but they do about twice as much of the household labor than men do. And another trend that needs to be considered is what's known as the glass ceiling and its corollary, the glass escalator. The glass ceiling refers to an invisible barrier in the workplace for women and minority advancement. This phrase was coined back in the 1990s when it became apparent that even though there were affirmative action policies in place to increase the advancement of women and minorities, that there seemed to be some kind of barrier to advancement. So the idea is that there is a barrier, but you can't see it. Thus, a glass ceiling exists that impedes the advancement of women and minorities in the workplace. This is illustrated by the numbers that Newman uses, that the median weekly income for lawyers, for males it's $1,934, while for females it's $1,449. Comparing income for physicians, Female physicians make $686 a week less than males, and then male nurses make $16 a week more than females, even though nursing is a woman-dominated field. And the notion of the glass escalator, it's the idea that white males are promoted more often, so it's a corollary to the glass ceiling. So to end this chapter, I want to emphasize that there has been quite a bit of progress that's been made in the past 50 years in the area of race and gender parity in the workplace. But there is much to be done still, since the subordinate groups are still not in a position of equality. And we are in the middle of a true social movement for LGBTQ individuals. We're seeing changes in some areas, but as far as LGBTQ rights in the workplace, there's much work that needs to be done to increase equality.